Hey guys, welcome back to Lavender. So good to see you. So today I'm sharing six life lessons that I've learned lately. And before I get into it, I want to announce that next week we are coming out with a new pastel notebooks on our shop. So get excited for that. And if you haven't heard, I'm doing a journaling series on IGTV to celebrate that launch. So every Saturday for the next six weeks, we're doing like a journaling video on a different topic or area of life. And there's emails that go along with the videos sharing journaling prompts that you guys can do. So if you love journaling, I'll post all the links down below on the videos and the email series. All right, so the first lesson I want to share today is something that I talked about recently, but I think it's worth sharing again in a more concise and clear way. So if you want to get that feeling of satisfaction out of life, you can't just pursue what makes you happy. You have to pursue a life that you are proud of. And pursuing a life you're proud of means doing things outside of your comfort zone, pushing your yourself, stretching your boundaries a little, doing things that are not necessarily pleasant, but things that would help you in the long run, things that are like investments to yourself. Focusing on happiness is great and happiness is important, but you have to check yourself and make sure you don't run the risk of like staying within what's in your comfort zone and doing only the things that make you happy in your comfort zone, things that are pleasurable, safe, and easy for you because I think you can fall into that trap because when you do things outside of your comfort zone, it's very unpleasant. You might not be happy. You might have to do things that are scary, but after doing those things, maybe after failing after falling down you will feel proud of yourself you will grow after that and that is a life that is more fulfilling than if you were to just stay within the confines of what makes you happy and what feels good and what's comfortable happiness is such a broad term you know you can fall into the happiness of doing what's easy and the happiness of being lazy you know i totally enjoy being lazy sometimes and doing nothing but if you do that for too long you're gonna feel like a slob and you're not gonna be proud of yourself and on the other end of the spectrum there's also like the happiness of excellence the happiness of always doing your best so for some people happiness means like okay i live a life doing my best but for other people happiness can mean i'm gonna take the easy route because i want to be lazy i want to chill so that's why i think happiness is too broad a term to tell people to chase after rather when you tell yourself i want to live a life that i'm proud of i want to do things that i'm proud of that pushes you just a little bit further than if you told yourself i want to live a life that makes me happy the second lesson I learned lately is to close the gap between knowing and doing. And confidence comes from knowing. So what I'm talking about is knowing what you have to do versus actually doing it. So the greater the gap between those two things, the greater the discomfort, the greater the anguish, the greater the resistance, procrastination, and then you have all this like stress and feeling overwhelmed and feeling anxious in between. So you want to take action immediately once you know enough information and on one hand this might seem obvious like don't procrastinate take action blah 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 but the secret to closing that gap is finding out what you need to know confidence comes from knowing so a lot of times people get stuck between that gap because they don't know enough to take the leap and start doing they know a little bit they know what they think they have to do and maybe you don't have enough research or enough data or maybe you're just afraid and it's likely that you're scared because there's so much uncertainty in that gap in that area you're not sure how to approach this action that you have to do you're not sure how to figure out this project you're not sure which way to take and there's just a lot of I don't knows so what you can do is list out what you know for sure and then list out what are the things that you don't know that you need to find out that would help you get closer to taking action without being afraid the more that you find out the more knowledge you gather the more confident that you're gonna become because you're gonna figure out how to do things like if you're stuck between like wanting to start a business but you just don't know how to start you need to go out and research. You need to go find the tools, learn how to make a website, learn how to take photos, basically gather the knowledge that would help you make better decisions and be better at your craft. And sometimes it's just a matter of like, 
putting effort into practicing and practicing until you get better. And once you get better, then you become more confident. So you're less scared to procrastinate. To put this in another way, a lot of the times what holds you back from taking an action on a project is because it matters so much to you that you're afraid to start because you're afraid to mess it up. You're afraid to fail. And so you need to gain confidence in yourself, in your abilities in order to be able to take action without feeling scared, without that procrastination or resistance. And that can come from two things. One was gathering information, learning, gathering all the knowledge that you need, learning the skills. And then two is just practicing and doing it and doing it until you get better at it. And the better you are, the more confident you are, and the less you're going to want to procrastinate because you know how to do it. You believe in yourself to do it. So just the idea of closing that gap between knowing and doing will help you so much because the greater the gap, the greater the discomfort. That area of discomfort is where your mind just overthinks, overanalyzes, stresses out, worries, it feels anxious, and you're just not putting it to good use. And on the topic of building your knowledge, skills, and confidence, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So Skillshare is a perfect example of a place you can go to learn new skills, gather the knowledge that you need to get in order to give yourself more confidence to take action towards your goals. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and creating. If you're a creative or entrepreneur, a class that I think you'd really like is this one on personal branding and crafting your social media presence. This class helps you find your purpose for your brand and how to figure out what type of content to create. By the way, Skillshare is also really affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can get a two month free trial by signing up down below at that link in the description. The next lesson I learned recently is you have to seek first to understand people. People have such different worldviews because we are raised in a different environment with different circumstances. Everyone has their own conditioning and you might not realize you're conditioned, but you are biased in your worldview. You only know the world through what you've seen, through what you've experienced and someone else can have a completely different experience of the world and thus a completely different worldview as you. And I think the problem with all of our different experiences is we can't understand each other because we are so different. And so you have to seek to understand those people who are very, very different from you. Like in politics, you know, people on the other end of the spectrum, why do they think what they think? Why do they believe what they believe? And you have to respect their beliefs and understand try to understand where that comes from. You know, being raised Asian American in California, I totally have my biases. You know, we're more progressive here and you see the world in a certain way. We're more health conscious, the things we eat are different than what other people eat around the world. It's so important to recognize that your worldview is limited and it's not the only way, it's not the best way. There are so many other perspectives and options out there. So it's best to go out there, talk to people and really, really try to understand different perspectives and that's the beauty of our world is that we have people from all walks of life all different perspectives we fill such a wide spectrum and everyone is meant to bring something to the table so you can't work together if you don't understand each other and if you don't communicate with each other so the first step is to just recognize we're all different, but we can understand each other and work together. The fourth lesson that I want to share is something that I've learned over and over again. And I feel like with relationships and friendships, you learn it more and more on a deeper level. You have to learn to treat people the way that they want to be treated, not how you want to be treated because people are different. So you have to understand people so deeply that you know what they would want, not what you would want because 
everyone's different. You can't expect that they want the same thing that you want. And I don't know if you guys have heard of the five love languages. That is a really good place to start. That's the idea that there are different love languages and everyone speaks and appreciates different languages. So if you have a partner and you speak different languages, you could be expressing your love in the way that you feel it, the way that like is natural to you. And they might not be able to receive that love and they might express their love in a different way that doesn't resonate with you. And so you have to first understand those differences and then you can learn to speak their language and they can learn to speak your language. And that is like the first step. By the way, I'll link my video on the five love languages down below so you can learn more. But even aside from the five love languages, like people have different motivations, different things that trigger their motivations. For some people, you have to be harder on them. For some people, you have to be more gentle with them. Some people are motivated when you don't believe in them. They're motivated when you doubt them, like you can't do this, you can't do that. And then other people, if you doubt them and you don't believe in them, it crushes them. And for those people, you have to really nurture them and be gentle and push them in a very encouraging, loving, positive way. And the funny thing is like Wilson is the first and I am the latter. I need support. I need people to believe in me. And he, like, no matter how much I try to, like, verbally tell him I believe in him and push him in a nice way, it does not work for him. And he needs someone to, like, be straight and mean and rough and pushing with him. Basically, different things trigger different people. And so you have to understand people and give them what they need. There's also a concept called emotional withdrawals and emotional deposits in relationships. So just like a bank has like withdrawals and deposits, in relationships there's the same thing with emotions. So a withdrawal is something that takes away energy and a deposit is something that gives love and energy. So sometimes you have to like take away your energy to deposit in someone else's. Like you don't want to go to someone's like soccer game but you want to do it because you love them and so you withdraw from your own emotion and you deposit in theirs and so there are certain things that are withdrawals or deposits and it's different for everyone for example i love to travel and i would love to go anywhere if wilson had a work trip i would go and i would think it's fun for me that's an emotional deposit because i see it as we're spending time together and it's good like i feel good doing that but on the other hand he does not like going on work trips with me he doesn't like that I travel so much. It takes a lot of energy out of him if he has to go with me somewhere. And so it's an emotional withdrawal for him. So you have to understand that people are different. We have different withdrawals and deposits. And it's one of those things that you learn over time through experience what is a withdrawal or what is a deposit. And the more you learn, the better you can be in your relationships. The next lesson I learned recently is the power of teamwork. And it might sound basic to you, but really like doing things by yourself versus doing it with a team, there's pros and cons to both, but you can do so much more with other people when you collaborate, when you bring your strengths to the table together. So I love this quote, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. And I feel like these past two years with Lavendaire, I've been learning to be slower and be patient because I'm working with a small team and things take longer when you're working with multiple people. It takes longer to communicate between people, to communicate ideas and your vision and to work things out. Previously, I did everything myself. And when you're doing everything yourself, it's like really fast. You know what you want. You just do it whatever, but I'm learning to delegate more and I see the power of like working with people, collaborating. And I was just thinking the other day, you know how we're coming out with the new pastel notebooks and the artists of life workbook. I realized how many people it takes to launch a product and get it in the hands of you guys. It's not just like me anymore. The first version of the workbook, I just made it myself. It was a digital PDF. I sent it directly. You guys purchased it, downloaded it. It was 
really easy. Now with like a physical product, you have the factory, the manufacturing team, and then you have the sourcing team in China, two people that I WeChat with. And then we have Wilson's team, his partner, his employees, the warehouse workers, people packing and shipping these things. And you have the postal service, people like literally shipping things. And then you have the Lavender team. You have me, you have my assistant. I have an editor, a graphic designer, photographer. When I hire photographers for my photo shoots, there's a whole chain here. And if anyone in that group of people messes up, it kind of affects the rest of the chain. And so the more people you work with, the more room there is for error. And a lot of things are outside of your control and things take a lot slower. And it's just, just a bigger scale that I'm learning to work with. And it's kind of astonishing how many people are involved and it just, it's amazing. Like everyone is really going hard doing what they're best at. You know, I'm the best at making content and communicating. Someone else is best at logistics. Someone else is best at like negotiating prices. And there's just so many parts that most people don't recognize, they don't see, but it's really, really amazing. The power of teamwork. <laughs> The last lesson that I want to share is something that I always, always try to remind myself, resilience. How important it is to be resilient. No matter how hard it is, no matter how many times you failed, no matter how many times you feel like you're not doing anything right or you're worthless or you're being unproductive, you're just wrong and messing up so much, you have to remind yourself, I can try again. I can do this again. The power of resilience. The power of humans are we are actually very, very resilient creatures. We can go through so much in life and if you're still alive and breathing, you have another day. You have another day to start again. And it's simple, but it's not simple. Do you know what I mean? It's the power of being able to stand up no matter how many times you've fallen down. And if you truly feel that you can be resilient no matter what, then you're definitely going to succeed. You're definitely going to make it because your hope is never gonna be beaten down. The only thing that keeps us down is ourselves, if we don't believe in ourselves. And if we decide, that's it, I give up, that's the end. But what if you told yourself, it's never the end. If I'm still breathing, I can still try again. Many, many times in the past, I felt that fear of failure. I felt scared to try because I don't wanna fail. I, or I feel like I'm failing so I feel bad about myself and I beat myself up and then it just makes it worse. It's like a negative cycle. And I have to remind myself that failure is good. Failure is actually a learning opportunity. Failure teaches you so many lessons. Failure is proof that you tried. It's proof that you took some sort of risk. And even though you failed, great. Like you should take that, learn what you can, and then pick yourself back up and try again. So if you're resilient, then you won't be afraid of failure because failure means that it's just like one stepping stone onto the next. But if you don't believe you can be resilient, then the fear of failure is going to stop you from taking action at all because you think that failure is the end. You think that that's what's gonna make you give up. But if you truly, truly believe that you can pick yourself back up no matter what happens in life, no matter how hard you fall, no matter how scary it feels or how hurt you are, how painful it is, if you can do that, then you would not be afraid to fail because you know that even if you fail, you'll just wake up the next day and go at it again. And that failure means that you have more experience, you have more data, more proof to work on to make you better. It really is just like a stepping stone as you improve in life. It's not something to avoid. So resilience is the key. All right, that's it for my life lessons today. Let me know which one was your favorite. Comment down below. Do you want more videos like these? And do you think six lessons was too long? I felt like this video is gonna be long and I'm afraid, but whatever, we'll see. But it is fun for me to share like my more recent life lessons. I'm thinking in the future, I could also do like business lessons that I've learned. Let me know what you wanna see down below. Would you rather see me talk about lessons that I've learned or mistakes that I've made in business? I'm deciding between the two right now. Your comments will help me decide. All right, thank you so much, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.